This is Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. The current module is on climaxes. I'm going through a list of common reversal patterns, and now we're at the end of the list, and that is climaxes. So what is a climax? It's any behavior that is probably unsustainable, and it's sometimes followed by a reversal. Most often it's followed by a correction that lasts for more bars and covers more points than what seems likely at the time that the reversal is beginning. Buy climaxes always end at resistance, like at a measured move target or at a trend channel line. Sell climaxes always end at support. So after a climax, why is the correction um, or the reversal so big? For example, after a buy climax, the rally ends once the bulls take substantial profits, right? So if the bulls are taking substantial profits, what, what are they thinking? They would not have exited if they were planning on buying again just a few ticks lower or a few bars later. They're exiting because they're expecting a much lower pullback and um, many bars sideways to down and possibly uh, two or three legs down. So the bulls are not looking to buy until the market has traded down for a lot of bars and a lot of points. So you don't have buyers down below. So there are not enough bulls to stop the bears from controlling the market. The market has to fall to a much lower price before the bulls will return. Not just a much lower price, they probably want to wait for 10 or 20 or more bars before they're looking to buy again. If they thought the market was just going to fall a few ticks and for a few bars, they would not have exited. They would have held on to their longs. You know, if you have a long a bull trend that has gone on for a long while, the bulls are not going to exit if they think the market's going to pull back just for a few ticks uh, and then the trend will resume. You know, they're going to continue to hold. The only reason they'll take their profits is if they think they can buy back much lower um, much later on. Climaxes in general are usually better described by some other term, like a wedge, a final flag, or a major trend reversal. V bottoms and inverted V tops do not exist. Every one is actually something else, usually a wedge or a final flag. Inverted V tops and V bottoms do not exist. All are some type of final flag. Sometimes the final flag is small, like a bar or two. Sometimes it's large. In this particular case, it's both. You have a series of consecutive buy climaxes, a large high two, a trading range, a tight trading range, a big magnet, another buy climax, and then three small sideways bars, and then a final buy climax. And you can call it a V-top or an inverted V-top. Well, to me, every top is some type, some type of double top. Sometimes the first high is uh, much lower down and it does not look like a double top, but every top is some kind of double top. And when the double top is not conspicuous, it usually means it's a small final flag. Sometimes the flag is just a single bar. Every bottom is some kind of double bottom. And again, uh, it can sometimes be just a single bar occurring you know, four, five, or six bars earlier. All V bottoms are better described by some other term that I think captures the actual price action better. Every V bottom is always some kind of double bottom, whether or not the first bottom is obvious. Um, here we have a small pair of dojis, so the market went down and up and then down and up, so it's a small potential final flag. It's also uh, an overshoot of a trend channel line and three pushes down, so it's a small wedge. So I would never describe a market as a V-bottom because a V-bottom makes it sound as if the market went straight down with no pauses and then straight up. Markets don't reverse that way. They always reverse with some kind of pause or some kind of attempt at a double bottom. So to me, I would describe this as a, a small final flag, even though no bar went above the prior, uh, high of the prior bar. There was a sideways price action, a couple small <clears throat> bodies with uh, tails. So there was some 
uh, buying going on here, creating a small pause. And this small pause turned out to be the final flag, even though it's very atypical for a final flag. A climax is a trend, and it's made up of more, one or more trend bars. Remember, every trend bar is a climax. Every trend bar is a breakout. Every trend bar is a gap. Every series of trend bars is a climax. And depends on the context, sometimes the series of trend bars will act as a breakout. Other times it'll, end, uh, it'll act as a climax and the end of a trend. A climax can be very fast, composed of a series of very big trend bars, in which case it's often scary, or it can be very slow. Okay? The trend uh, sometimes accelerates into an emotional parabolic curve. For example, a bear trend can get steeper and steeper and steeper and almost be in a free fall and then reverse up sharply. Remember, a, every trend bar is a climax. So a single trend bar um, that becomes a failed breakout is a climax. A series of unremarkable trend bars that just keeps growing. The series keeps adding new trend bars to it. That can also be a climax. It's unsustainable behavior. Whenever the market reverses from unsustainable behavior, it usually follows, uh, is followed by a TBTL correction. Uh, 10 bars, 2 legs. It can last more than 10 bars, it can have, but it usually has at least 2 legs. So that's my guideline when I'm looking for um, a reversal, whether it's a climactic reversal or any other kind of reversal. I'm always looking for a minimum of 10 bars and a minimum of two legs in the opposite direction. I think this is really interesting. This is the E-mini uh, futures contract, and it's a weekly chart. And you, although you can't tell, this has a bull body, this has a bull body, and so does this. This area inside the red box is 10 consecutive bars with bull bodies. And that's never happened before in the history of the E-mini. So do you think that's sustainable behavior? Um, no, it's climactic behavior. Even though the bars are not all large, it's still unsustainable behavior. And whenever the market does anything that's unsustainable, it usually has um, about 10 bars and two legs sideways to down. Here we had three legs down. It's possible that this is simply the first leg of a larger two-legged correction, but this might be the end of the pullback. We might be channeling up, forming higher lows and higher highs. So this is extremely climactic, even though the bars are not big. It's extremely climactic because the E-mini has never had 10 consecutive bull bars on a weekly bar chart. So something that has never happened before is extremely unusual and unsustainable, and therefore climactic. Remember, every climax is always something else, and this is a higher low, excuse me, a higher high major trend reversal. We have a bull trend, a strong bear breakout, and a higher high major trend reversal. So it's a reasonable short there, or on the second entry below this strong bear reversal bar as well. Consecutive climaxes, uh, every trend bar and every series of trend bars is a climax. If you have a climax, let's say a cell climax, or one or two or three bars and then a pause, and then another cell climax and a pause, and another cell climax and a pause. Without much of a pullback between the climaxes, you should expect uh, 10 bars and two legs in the opposite direction. For example, um, each one of these red boxes is a cell climax, and here we've had six or seven consecutive cell climaxes and uh, that is unsustainable behavior. And it's also developing a parabolic curve, which is also climactic. So the market probably will have a pretty good correction, at least 10 bars and at least two legs um, sideways to up. Parabolic curve, if you look at the trend uh, channel line below the lows, they're becoming increasingly steep. We have a small double top at the bottom, forming a low two short possible final flag, and then a two bar reversal at the bottom. So that's a reasonable buy for a test up at least to the moving average, and probably will get 10 bars and two legs. And this is what followed. We have the consecutive cell climaxes, 
the small double top bear flag, uh, leading to the um, becoming a final flag reversal, another cell climax, and a two bar reversal. Minimum target is uh, 10 bars, two legs um, sideways to up. We have one push here, second push here. At this point, the market's clearly always in long, so I would not be looking to take profits and I would not be looking to short. Um, at this point, the market has become a strong bull breakout. I would be look, looking to buy. The minimum target is 10 bars, two legs. Here, we got much, much more. A climax occurs late. Um, when you have a climax in the form of a late, strong breakout, it can be an exhaustion um, gap in a trend. So if you have a trend going on for 30 or more bars, so in other words, late in the trend, and then you suddenly have one of the best looking uh, trend bars breaking out uh, to a stronger trend, um, that is a climax, and it usually attracts profit takers and uh, counter trend traders. So if you have a very strong bull trend, and then a sudden big bull trend bar closing on its high, or two or three strong bull bars closing on its high, the bulls will say, wow, what a great opportunity to exit at a, at a wonderfully high price. And the bulls will sell out. The bears will say, wow, this is probably a, a buy climax. What a great place to short. And the bears will sell. So you got the bulls selling. You have the bears selling. The market's going to reverse, probably 10 bars, two legs down. So for example, let's say you have a bull trend that's going on for about 40 bars. And then now it suddenly has a big bull breakout, one or two strong bull trend bars closing near their highs. Okay, It could be the start of a new stronger leg up. More likely, it'll attract sellers. The bulls will come in and say, well, what a gift. I'm going to sell out of my longs and only look to buy after 10 bars, two legs down. The bears will say, wow, this is uh, too much, too far, too fast. What a great place to short. The bulls have a big open profit, and they're looking for a reason to exit. And when they get this gift of a, a surprisingly big final profit, they'll exit. They're not going to exit if they're thinking it's, there's just going to be a small pullback that follows. Um, they would continue to stay long. Remember, they've stayed long for 20 or 30 or 40 bars, uh, and there were pullbacks along the way. If uh, this is just going to be another small pullback, they're going to hold long. They're only exiting at the end of this uh, strong bull breakout because they believe the market's going to pull back for a long time and for a lot of bars and for a lot of points. They won't look to buy again until the market falls at least uh, 10 bars and two legs. The bears see it as a great opportunity to sell at an extremely high price expecting a big correction. So here's an example. We have a bull trend it goes on for about 30 or 40 bars, and now we have the best looking bull bar in the entire trend. Um, so it could be a breakout that leads to a new leg up. It could also be uh, an exhaustion gap. Uh, remember, every trend bar is a gap. Here we got a close above the high of the prior bar. The bar afterwards, a low above the high of the prior bar. So there's clearly a gap. Um, whether this becomes a measuring gap or an exhaustion gap, we don't know. Um, but there's not much follow through here, so the bulls are probably taking profits and the bears are probably going short. The bears, are, as a minimum target, they're looking for 10 bars, two legs, and they're looking for the market to go at least one tick below the low. The bears will short this close, they'll short below bars, and their original stop will be probably about a measured move up based on the height of the bar. They're 60% certain that the market will correct, so they can go for a profit target equal to their risk. If they're risking a measured move up, um, up to here, so if they enter here short and their stop is here, um, a reward equal to their risk is the bottom of this bar, and bears will uh, take at least partial profits at the bottom of the bar over here in this area. You could also view this as a higher high major trend reversal. We have a bull trend, a trend line break, a breakout, and then um, a second entry short for the higher high major trend reversal. First entry, not all that strong, an II with the doji signal bar, but then we have a second entry, and that's a more reliable, um, a more reliable short. That's the end of my module on climaxes.